You're listening to The Hikam with Sheikh Zahir Bekas of the Lotri Foundation. In this podcast, Sheikh Zahir explains the aphorisms from Ibn Atta al-Laz famous book of wisdoms, Al-Hikam al-Ata'iyya, a classical manual of spiritual development. Visit secretshub.org for online courses, our reliable answer service, and engaging media. Amen. اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما بفضلك وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وصلم آمين So in the Hikam of Shaykh Ibn Ta'illah So yesterday we covered this part of it uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want from the servant of his what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from his servants is that they worship him in the best of worships or in the best of ways Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants them to be true to their to their works and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants them to have consciousness of him in what he deserves of their consciousness or of their taqwa. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu wa taqullaha qatu qatihi That all you who believe have uh, fear, God-fearedness or have consciousness of Allah, taqwa, haqqatu qatihi uh, in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves or in what is the fulfillment of his rights or in the best of what uh, one can be. And so the servant is is the one who constantly uh, tries his best or her best to perform acts of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in hopes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts those works or accepts those deeds. And consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, what is the best of one's taqwa, the best of one taqwa is that of consciousness, is that one works for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, does deeds for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with ikhlas, that one is doing it only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one else, that one, any works that one does, any words that one speak, that it's done solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not looking for any... uh, not looking for any praise of anyone or looking for any rewards from anyone but looking strictly for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with one that one does it for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not for any other pleasure or any other person or any other thing but that one uh, works one's best and does one deeds and fulfill one's deeds for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this is what uh, this particular uh, book is is about. Uh, it's about one uh, moving forward to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we finish the first quarter of it and chapterizes it, or the first quarter is about the alaj al kulub, about the the healing of the of the heart, the healing of the heart. Because as we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, wants uh, your heart to go back to him in the best of states and in the purest of state as Allah subhanahu wa without any attachment in it to anything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says la yanfu ma'al wala bunun illa ma'at Allah bi kalbin salim there's that your wealth and that your progeny your bunun your children your progeny is not going to aid you benefit you at all, except the one who comes to Allah, that Allah be bin Salim, they come to Allah with a pure heart. They come with a heart that is unattached to anything. They come to a heart, that, uh, they come with a heart that that does not have anything in it except love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, love of His Messenger. They don't have any uh, any admixture of anything else except pure love for him how do you get that purity and our hearts become our hearts become attached to things 
our hearts become attached to things in this world and it becomes and why it becomes attached to it because we have concern over those things instead of leaving it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there are those who have uh, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has who work and through the mercy of Allah and the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he makes them uh, oblivious uh, he makes them oblivious of their works so that they they don't consider or weigh their works mm. they do works uh, ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they do good things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they may fast, they may give in sadaqah, they may do all these things to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they become oblivious to it meaning that they forget that they've done it, meaning they don't keep a check that I've done this and I've done that and I do this and I do this and so on and so forth. They become Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes them from considering it, thinking about it. They just look forward to the next time that they can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's all. They don't remember it because they're not making a checklist of all the good that they've done. No. Allah subhanahu has removed it from them mm, so that they can look so that they look forward to the next time that they see a good work that the next time that they see something good to do and then they do it they look forward to Allah subhanahu opening up his doors for them to walk through to do something good so the next time Allah subhanahu may open up the door is the time for a salah or the next time Allah subhanahu opens up the door is to give in sadaqah or the next time Allah subhanahu opens up the door is to be helpful to someone. Whatever, whatever it is, they look forward to it and they're keen to it. They're keen and they are, they are, uh, they're, uh, they're uh, very uh, uh, conscious of those moments that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring to them. They're conscious of those moments that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to bring to them. And because of their conscious of it, they don't miss the times that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, calls after them to perform a good deed or to do a good work. No matter what those deeds are, it could be anything at all. And the best that they, that they do, and those are, those are the ones who want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They want closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't do acts in and of themselves. They don't do acts or deeds in and of themselves to feel the pleasure of the prayer or to feel the pleasure of their works. No, they want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So irregardless of how they feel after their works, irregardless, because that feeling is a dunyawi feeling, irregardless of how they feel after the work, it's not what drives them to go to the next work. It's not. It's not what drives them to go to the next work. Because you may do a work, you may do an act, you may pray in salah, and right after you finish the salah, you may be in the same, you may not feel anything. You may not feel anything. What drives you to the next work that you do is that you're doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't matter what you feel from this work or that work or what you do, it doesn't matter you do the next work because that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has determined for you and that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has uh, made for you open up the doors for you to walk through and so the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who's traveling the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who's on a path traveling towards him is a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is who looks forward to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he looks forward to what Allah will bring him or her and not what he's going or she's going to bring to themselves the servant who wakes up in the morning who's on this path he when you wake up most people some people they they look and they say what do I have to do today and they list things I'm gonna have to do this I'm gonna have to do this and so on and so forth maybe I'll squeeze in this perhaps if I free up some time I'll 
I'll be able to perform this prayer in the masjid or whatnot, or help this person or whatnot. They look and they look at their schedule. The ones who are true travelers to Allah are the ones when they wake up in the morning, they say, oh Allah, I'm ready for what you're going to give to me today. I'm ready to accept whatever you bring my way today. I'm ready to accept whatever you want to busy me with today or open for me today or close for me today or uh, bring my way or prevent my way. They look at it from that perspective, the perspective of what is Allah, what are you going to do today? Not from what I'm going, what am I going to do today? What are you going to allow me to do today? Or what are you going to prevent me to do today? When you look at it from that perspective, then you know from the moment that you wake up that it's Allah who's in charge of your affairs of that day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in charge of your affairs of that day, not you. You are not in charge of your affairs. It's Allah. وَمَكْرُوا وَمَكْرُوا اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَكْرِينَ You plan and Allah plan. We plan our days. وَمَكْرُوا We plan. وَمَكْرُوا Allah And Allah plans. وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَكْرِينَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to plan, of course, to get certain things in. But we leave, we leave the outcome to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the wasilun that he talks about, they have what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes them forget completely and shields from them from beholding what? Not only their works, but their state. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala conceals from them from beholding their state, how they feel. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hold back how you may feel in a particular ibadah? Why? so that you're not looking for that result every time you do that ibadah. How should you feel after you pray? How should you feel after you fast? How should you feel? You should feel good. That's no doubt. Because that's the, that's the mu'min. As the Prophet ﷺ said, من صدر uh, من, uh, the Prophet ﷺ, whoever, uh, whoever feels good, when he does man sadra hasanatuhu, whoever feels good after they do a good work and feels bad after they do an e- a bad work, an evil work, for who a mu'min, then, test, then he is a believer. You should feel good. But the goodness comes that Allah has allowed you to perform that action. That's the goodness. The goodness that you should feel is that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen you to perform that work. Allah has chosen you. Not that you have chosen for yourself. Allah has chosen it for you. And so that, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who were traveled, those who arrived, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them oblivious through uh, that, beholding him through that understanding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened up their consciousness and made it firm in them. He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it firm, for, firm in them. And that's the, that's the trial of the believer. The trial of the believer who is performing acts of ibadah and coming and, and praying and fasting and so on and so forth. The trial of that believer, there are many different trials. There are people who have the trial of waking up in the morning. There are people who have the trial of, of performing prayer on time. There are people who have the trial of... Uh, of uh, of reading the Qur'an. There are people who have the trial of, of all kinds of things. The trial of some of the believers, especially those who do works of goodness, they pray and they fast and so on and so forth. The trial of those believers is to not become caught up in those works. Meaning what? That they do not become, they do not think of themselves as becoming better or, or they're better than the others. That's the trial. The trial of the believer is to, when you do works, is that you do not think for a moment that you are better than the ones who do not do any work. That's the trial. 
because the one who does not do any work, he may attain to his sin for not performing. But the one who does a work for something else, or someone else, or there's an admixture of it without any sincerity in it, is it any better? Is it any better? So the, the one who is performing acts of ibadah, the one who's performing acts of ibadah, he has to take out from that act of ibadah any sense of uh, arrogance in it, any sense of arrogance in it. And he's got to take out any, any connection to anything else, except that it's done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, khalisli wa jalla, that it's done strictly for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, strictly, that there's no nothing in it for this world or nothing left back for this world or nothing that is connected to this world. Nothing. He does it. This is Al-Azr al Qulub. This is, this is what he talked about in the first quarter of this book. How to, how to scrutinize yourself. How do you scrutinize yourself? How is it that you, that you look upon yourself and the works that you do? and the things that you do in order to continue it. In order to continue it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He'll open up the door. He'll open up the doors. And the doors that He opens up and your ibadah, you will be asked about. And the, and the, best, uh, the best of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that no one knows what action is accepted or not. Which of your actions are accepted or not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala conceals it so that you try, so that you aim for more consciousness, that you aim for more ikhlas, that you keep trying your best. And that's what, that's what propels the believer. That's what should propel the believer. Because you don't know which of your actions are going to be accepted, which one will, will be accepted, which one will be taken. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept which one of them. So the believer constantly tries his best or her best, consistently trying his or her best to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the best of ways. To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the way that he, uh, that he deserves to be worshipped. And at the end of the day, we don't know what uh, that perfection is in our works. We don't know. We don't know what that, what it looks like. We don't know what it is. We don't. But we always have to consistently try for it. Always consistently drive yourself for it. And, and take that stance that you want it to become better. That, that, that your works of, 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 of worship, that it becomes better for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and try one's utmost to keep going forward instead of looking behind, looking forward to the next work or looking forward to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place at your hands. And what he places at your hands you should, uh, for you to do, then you should do it in whatever, however, uh, however you want uh, to perform it and to do it then you should do it and not turn away from it. Don't turn away from what Allah subhanahu wa has opened up uh, his doors for. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's his fadl, that his, that's his, his honoring of you, and that's his bringing forth for you something to do. And so be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is one of the ways to, uh, to continue in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're thankful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase you as He promises in the Quran in Shakartum Nakum. If you are thankful or grateful, then I will increase you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has determined it. So continue on the on that path and then leave the rest to uh, leave the planning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the end of the day, you know, you can make the best of plans. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can change it. You can make the best of plan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can change it within a moment. You can either make the plan 
you can you can make the plan something that is better for you or you can make the plan something that you will consider worse for you in the end whatever Allah plans is going to be better for the servant no matter what happens it's better for the servant and so you may be prevented from doing something that you wanted to do or the door may open up for something that you never considered that you're going to do all of it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nashatullah uh, do you leave it for the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When you leave it for the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the believer, when he, uh, when he sees or when she sees that everything is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands, that's the realization that, that we strive for. That's the realization you should strive for, that you see everything as an extension from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands. That there's no, there's no kuwa, wala hawl. There's no hawl and there's no kuwa, la hawl, wala kuwa illa billah. There's no strength, and there's no might except with Allah. That's what the statement means. That's what that atkar means, la hawl, wala kuwa. There's no strength and no might except that which is from Allah, illa billah, except with Allah. Hmm. So there's no strength and there's no kuwa, there's no might and kuwa within you. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the, the servant continues. What is this, you know, the... Uh, uh, why do the ulama, they talk about these things? They talk about these things because they don't want the servant to get ahead of himself or herself in terms of the works that they do. They don't want them to get ahead of themselves. And what they want them to do is, treat, is keep striving for better and keep striving to, uh, to get closer to Allah and to keep striving to become uh, where they're conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not conscious of anything else. They're not conscious of anything else. And they see with insight through everything. They see in, through insight to everything. So they're not bogged down in the... Uh, they're not bogged down in the problems of this world. They're not bogged down. And they don't get depressed and have anxiety or fall into depression because something goes wrong in their plan. It may go wrong in their plan, but with consciousness they know it's going right with Allah's plan, because Allah has planned it. And so the believer is completely removed from these things, from anxiety and depression, completely removed. And they're completely removed, why? Because they have come to that consciousness, that they've removed their own plans, and now they're reliant on Allah's plans. <coughs> and if you're reliant on Allah's plans, then everything is going right in their life. Everything is going right in their life. So even if one is struck with a sickness or an illness, it's in the plan of Allah, it's gone right. It has been determined from Allah, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If, it if it's according to your plan, then it's gone wrong. If, it, if, it's, if it's according to your plan, it's gone wrong. And then you may be regretful, and it may lead to anxiety or depression or whatnot. But, if it, but it's going right to Allah, in Allah's plan. It's going right to Allah's plan. According to Allah's plan, what hit you was meant for you. What missed you was meant for you. And so there's no room then for that believer to feel depressed. There's no room for that believer to feel depressed or sad. There's no room. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't leave any room for that believer. And that's the, that's the realization of the verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, That's the realization of that verse. The realization of that verse is found there. That everything is in the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's up to the servant to accept it. It's up to the servant to accept it. And if they accept it, then, alhamdulillah, 
There's nothing that will phase the servant. Nothing. Nothing will come to phase the servant. Nothing. Because they have complete accepted the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, guide us, forgive us, have mercy upon us. How do you get there? Be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do you get to that point? Thankfulness. That's all. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek his forgiveness at all moments. Uh, at all moments for all of the works that, uh, that you do. Why is it that after the Salah, the first thing the Prophet has narrated that he says after the Salah is istighfar three times. Why? Just think about that. Think about the reason why. I'm not going to tell you. Think about the reason why after the Salah, the Prophet ﷺ used to say, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Why? You just finished praying. You just came and prayed. You read the verses of Allah, His words you read. You read His verses. You prostrated before your Lord. You prostrated before your Lord. Hmm? You made dua with your by with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You made dua to him. Hmm? Why is it then it's narrated that the first thing the Prophet said was istighfar three times? Why? Why would you why? Why is it narrated as such? Why did he do that? Istighfar. He made istighfar three times. He then said he didn't say Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. No, he said Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Why? Why? Mm. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, guide us, forgive us, have mercy upon us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in closeness to Him, protect our elders, our parents, give them good health and long life. Those who have passed away from amongst them, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them His mercy, His makfira, and His shade on that day. There is no shade except His. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our children, keep on the straight path, make their footing firm in His deen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us. Forgive us, have mercy upon us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive and protect all the ummah of the Messenger of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lift the hands of the oppressor from the ummah of the Messenger of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve and protect all of the all of our brothers and our sisters. Secure them, grant them security, peace. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feed them, close them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them against those who cause harm to them or those who cause fitna. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to not be uh, fitna to those who are around us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and protect our children. Grant us all forgiveness and protect and accept uh, all of our works that we do for his sake. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fast on this day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fast from yesterday, the day before and tomorrow. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it in our works that are uh, accepted by him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept uh, our works, accept our fast. And make us from amongst the people who enter into Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our homes from amongst the homes of the believers. Make our last words our best words. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shadu wa la ila ila ant. Astaghfiru ka wa atubi ilayk. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Ameen. Thank you for listening to the Hikam with Shaykh Zahir Bekas. Help Seekers Hub spread the light of guidance to millions around the world by supporting us through monthly donations by going to seekershub.org slash donate. Your donations are tax deductible in the U.S. and Canada.